Winter Cut Day 55. How are you guys doing today? That's good. That's good to hear. All right, we're getting the creatine. We're getting whey protein, as always. And uh, for carbs today, pre-workout, instead of having our typical honey, I'm going to have a donut from Dunkin'. And, you know, it's probably, I don't know, double the calories of what I would normally have in honey, which is completely fine because I'm still in a deficit regardless. So we're also going to have some coffee. The agenda for today's back day is starting off with curls. That's it. Oh, wait. <laughs> So we're starting off with curls for today's back day. And uh, it's going to be good. We always do this, but the plan is kind of just to have more of a ridiculous arm development. It's kind of the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, the goal is to just kind of have disproportionately big arms. And then... um. Just let the rest catch up or, or, you know, do its thing. Because I know a lot of guys who are natty, they tend to have disproportionately smaller arms and they have like a torso dominance effect because they can bench really heavy. You know, they get squat heavy, deadlift heavy, whatever. They can do a lot of pull-ups, but they have smaller arms. So um, I'm not, I don't want to just have like slightly bigger arms or arms that are you know, normal looking for a gym guy who's been going for a while. I want to have like really, really freaky arms compared to the rest of my physique. So I train like it and it does help that I have pretty decent arm genetics. So they tend to just grow more than everything else anyway. But on top of that, I'm prioritizing them in my program. So my back seems to grow much better whenever I load up really heavy weights and kind of forget the form, to be honest. Now, of course, am I, tr am, I, am I swinging back and forth on it? No, I'm not. If I swing, to be honest, I don't know why. It might feel like I'm swinging a lot, but when I watch the videos back, it's still like barely any extra movement. Like I was doing uh, what I perceived to be barbell cheat rows a couple weeks ago, and I literally thought I was cheating so much, but I, I played the clip back and my spine didn't move more than an inch. So... It was one of those things I do very strict form to begin with. And uh, that's just kind of how I was taught. But when I let loose a little bit, when I don't try to get a full complete rep, uh, whenever I try to be really explosive and just mm, put, more, put more effort into it, right? And I get more in return. Whereas normally, um, I, I had a really hard time growing my back before. And I would do extremely, extremely controlled movements. We're talking about, uh, you know, four second eccentric, pause at the bottom, the whole deal. And uh, pauses all over the place. And the thing is, the issue with that was I never was able to actually progressively overload, right? So even if I was getting stronger, I was getting stronger to such a small extent that it wasn't actually uh, yielding me anything, right? Now, obviously, once I'm strong enough with looser form, I could do heavier weight to a substantial degree on more strict form and then make that more progressible just by the sheer fact of percentages, right? Like, if I was doing, when I first started out, 80 pounds on the lat pull down and I was doing hyper strict form I feel like especially if I wasn't eating more which I should have been at the time uh you know progress wasn't being made so literally it happened during the cut too which this can't be the efficacy of my method can't be denied at least you know for myself sometimes you get to switch the form up and that could be different from person to person like Jay Cutler, he always said he responded better to cheat reps. And I don't doubt that because, yes, I always talk about training more efficiently 
and using optimal, you know, guidelines to your training and doing your best to make what you're already doing better. But the thing is, some people just enjoy a training style so much more that it actually gives them more benefits in the long run. Now, we could talk about tempo all day, but the reality is tempo really does not matter for hypertrophy. And I know a lot of guys are going to freak out when I say that, but you're getting the same total tension whether you do 30 reps or 5 reps, right? It's just a matter of how close are you to failure and how you get there doesn't really matter. Now, yes, some things can be a limiter. Like if I do really high reps, it can severely limit my ability to output more force towards the end of my set and I could stop early. But that's just one example. And that doesn't, that's not really relevant to what I'm trying to talk about here. I'm just trying to say basically that some guys might get in their groove more and be able to train closer to failure with a different technique. Right. So, and especially too, I mean, a lot of guys are obsessed with mind muscle connection. What if them feeling the muscle makes it subconsciously feel like they're being more productive. And so they eke out some more effort and they try to stay in that groove. That's what I did forever for shoulders and my shoulders are pretty strong in my physique, I'd say. So with that said, I'm going to uh, slam down this coffee. I should probably also have a liquid IV and a multivitamin of some sort. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really strictly staying on chicken only anymore because it was more of a gimmick whenever I was doing it. While it did work extremely well for weight loss and, and you know, not even just weight loss, but fat loss, I it definitely was not sustainable because I was foregoing pre-workout carbs, which was kind of lessening the efficacy of my training. And I think carbs are extremely important. I mean, you can observe yourself. Like if you don't eat before you work out, you have less endurance, you have less power output. But if you eat, especially carbs, you're able to have those things. So I have extremely terrible news. I mean, this is probably the worst news you guys will ever hear from me. I am out of creatine. I have one scoop, maybe, maybe, uh, Here's half a scoop. Let's see. There you go. All right. Yeah, guys, I've only missed one day of creatine since I started taking this. And still, I'm noticing pretty big uh, boosts in my strength. I mean, on the cut, I just hit a PR on incline press. Actually, I don't even want to say it was a PR. I've done, I believe I've done... A legitimate 225 on the Smith machine before for like three. So two plates and a 10 on each side. But on, I noticed that whenever I like super cut and, and have just been really seriously cutting it, the, the weight went down on that a little bit and then it came back up from the creatine. And then from my Super Bowl carb up, I was able to do even better. And yesterday I hit a, uh, kind of a cut PR of 210. Uh, yeah, it was 210 pounds for four reps. The fourth rep was a little bit sus because I raised my butt off the bench, but they were paused reps, which was really awesome. So making minuscule improvements over time, right? I think, uh, to be honest though, guys, uh, as much as I, I love being natural, and I know that it's pretty much just never-ending slow gains being natural. Uh, the slow part gets to me, guys. The slow part gets to me. So I really am excited to start bulking again because the funny thing is I'm, I'm making probably the fastest gains I've ever made in my life, and yet it still feels slow. So, yeah, though, but I mean, especially on the bulk. I mean, you guys got to think. I got a huge increase in my strength during this cut, like before the creatine and everything. Huge increase in my strength. Every week I was progressing on all my lifts, pretty much, with the exception of a few every now and again. PRing 
week after week after week after week after week on everything. And at a certain point, you can't say it's neurological adaptation anymore, right? When you're a couple months in and you're, it's a fixed movement. Like you can't tell me that my brain is still adapting to a single arm preacher curl. I mean, that's the easiest thing to learn. Getting stronger on that every week. Uh, getting stronger at lat pull downs. I was getting stronger at them every week for a very significant time span, which is interesting because I wasn't getting stronger on them during the bulk whenever I was trying to do really hyper strict form. So it's got me thinking. So last night I was playing splinter cell and, uh, you know, keep in mind guys, this is, this is not like a new splinter cell. This is the game boy for uh, probably, yeah, well before I was born, this, this thing came out. Uh, the, and it, it was a solid game. I'm telling you right now, it's a solid game. Uh, but yeah, dude, I was, I was just trying to beat it last night, right? Trying to get all the levels done with finally, because I've been playing it for a couple days and I really just want to get it beaten. And, uh, I got to this level called Caspian oil rig and dude, it was ridiculous. It, like, there was a part, like, it was pretty easy throughout the whole thing because I didn't really have to be that stealthy, like, which is rare for a Splinter Cell level. But uh, there came a point where I had to chase this dude down the oil rig. And any, every single time he, like, went out of the range of my screen, within a couple seconds, the game would end and it would say mission failed. So I had to do this thing where I would chase him, keep up with him, and he was the same speed as me. Keep this in mind, same speed as me. I had to keep up with him and occasionally pull out my gun to shoot him while he was within the frame. And guys, it takes a second to do. You have to pull it out and then shoot. So I had to do it so quick and it took me so many attempts and I was just sitting there for probably, it had to have been 30 minutes. The same little like same level over and over again and dude i had to look up a video which i'm slightly embarrassed about but i, I mean i had to literally look up a video i'm like okay when does when am i supposed to shoot this guy because he keeps getting ahead of me so long story short i freaking shot him i had to shoot him i think four times and uh i caught him and i completed the mission but now i'm at a another level i forget what where i'm at now i, I did cia and then Caspian oil rig, I don't know what's next. And now we chug. All right, I'm gonna be honest, I gotta poop. I'll be back, guys.
Dos. Dos. That went super well. I don't know how many reps I got, but it felt like a lot. And I know that I did grind to the best of my ability without cheating, or at least cheating that I could actually feel. Uh, so that's nice. Now we move on to the right arm. I wanna get like 10 reps. I kind of, I don't know, I counted last time, but I think what I'm gonna do is the Jay Cutler count, like the Or I might do Low-key forgot to count again, but it did feel like a lot, so. Plus, I'm not too concerned about hitting PRs at this point in the cut because I'm getting to the point where like, guys, you can see my sartorius. I'm getting leaner. I'm not lean yet, per se, to my standards, but I am definitely getting lean enough to the point where it's like, all right, if strength goes down, I'll do everything in my power to make sure it doesn't, but if it goes down, I'm not gonna be unhappy with myself or disappointed. So, you know, it is what it is. And for anybody who doesn't know what the sartorius muscle is, you can either go to like slide two of my Instagram post that I posted recently, or you could just look it up and on an anatomy chart. So, yeah. And uh, by the way, my legs look way better without a pump, which I guess is the case for everybody as I'm learning it recently. But uh, it is kind of funny because, I don't know, like you would think it's the opposite. Like every other muscle looks way better and way more defined with a pump, but I guess not for legs, so. Boys, I literally just realized I might have to grow out the Kevin Lavroni hair. I legitimately think that might look good on me, who knows. Leave it down in the comments if you think I should grow out Kevin Lavroni hair. You guys don't see my hair too often because I usually wear a beanie in my videos, but like at home you can see what it looks like. So, should I get the Kevin Lavroni hairstyle? What do you guys think? That adds some cool hair now if you it's either that to me or the Jay Cutler hairstyle and I think if I got Jay Cutler's hair I would also want to wear the like half ripped towel bandana he puts around his head or the headband or whatever I don't even know what you call that he just he looks like freaking a Street Fighter character you know what I'm saying so I don't know it's either that or just the Kevin LeBron he just you know and he makes that face he goes And he looks in the mirror and he's all.
somebody said, there's no reason I should keep cutting on one of my last videos. I think it was like winter cut day 47 on my chest day. And in that video, I looked really good. I looked kind of lean, but I feel like those people who comment that, number one, they look at me while I'm posing with a pump and good lighting, good angle and everything, and they go, oh man, you already look lean, no need to cut. But you guys don't see me whenever I'm just sitting there on my phone at home editing videos or whatever. I'm like literally just chilling and I don't look very lean. Now, I know obviously that that's not the standard. The standard, in my opinion, should be on a bodybuilding stage, right? Being judged by a judge. You know, how would they score you, right? Uh, they score you from kind of a different angle where you're on the stage, they're in the seats, they're seeing you from that angle. So that's the angle you should judge yourself from, in my opinion. My point is that I have a lot more fat to lose, okay? And it might not be visible whenever I'm posing, but I do have a good amount more, so. Doosh. You know, just a little side note. I feel like my shins have become hyper resistant because I keep smashing plates and bars and random chunks of metal around the gym into my shins and it used to shock me. It was painful. But now I think I just kind of expect it so it doesn't hurt as bad. That set, five reps, wide grip at a tempo that I liked. Very nice. I wanna go for probably five reps again, but just with my body weight. And I think I'll be able to get more, but, but we'll see. So good to set conservative goals so you don't disappoint yourself, right? I actually, well, I just set a ridiculous goal of doing wide grip pull-ups with a plate around me, and I did. So set ridiculous goals, but also set conservative goals, right? You wanna be smart in your training. You don't wanna be an idiot. So be careful with yourself.
quality set. I add a little bit of weight by drinking water before the set. Chest supported dumbbell rows going well. Oh, wait. Chest supported dumbbells went really well. I slid down the bench a little bit, kind of messed with my flow, but either way, I still got a good stimulus, and uh, I'm looking forward to the pump check in a minute. But I want to try to see, even though I'm crunched on time, if I could throw in maybe a set of good mornings uh, and just go lighter on wrist curls today before we do the pump check. So. Yes.
Alright boys, pump cover or pump check went good. Uh, good mornings went pretty well. I'm actually excited for them in the future because they felt incredible on my spinal erectors, which I want to strongly develop to the point of you know I'm doing 225 or something on those eventually. So back day went good, biceps, forearms, everything went good, and uh, yeah, I gotta go. Alright boys. I'm kind of enjoying this style of outro because I get to kind of just do it right before bed when I'm chilling and uh, just kind of recap with you guys over my day. So today went really good. The lift went well. Went to church afterward. Uh, that was super fun and awesome. So I enjoyed that. And yeah, got home. <sighs> Boy, actually, I'm really tired. And what did I even do when I got home? Watch a show with my mom and dad, Frasier. It was pretty funny. They showed me an episode they thought was funny, and that was enjoyable. <laughs> but uh, then after that, I mean, really, just... I don't even remember what I did. I must have just messed around. And just kind of, like, laid in my bed or something. I had a huge meat meal. So much chicken and beef. I don't know what I was thinking when I ate it, to be honest. But... It was healthy. I mean, there was no added calories from anything. It was probably, I want to say it was probably like 1,200 calories of just straight up meat, which is a lot. But, uh, yeah, it was so much. It was so much. But then after that, I played my freaking DS. Oh, it closed. Yeah, bro, this was passed down to me by my brother years ago. I remember when he did, and it was, I don't know. I remember it fondly, but, um, freaking splinter cell, I'll load this bad boy up so you guys can hear it. Yeah, bro. Yeah, right now. I am on, let's see what I'm on. So I just finished, today I finished Caspian Oil Refinery and Shipyard. And hold on, let me just reposition my phone. 
And now I have nuclear plant. That is the level that I'm on. So, yeah, I'm probably going to upload this video. I don't even know. I mean, it is pretty late. It's like 4.15 in the morning right now. I'm going to export this video while I play this. Try to get as far as I can into nuclear plant. See if I can maybe even somehow beat that level. Because it does take quite a few attempts sometimes. And, um, yeah, I think that's... um. That's about it, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Have a good day. Or night. Or whenever you're watching this.